the TCI Sports High School Football Game of the Week. Tonight from Troy Athens High School, it's the Don Darrow Oaks taking on the Athens Red Hawks. Hello everyone, Dave Zorn along with Joe Abramson here at Troy Athens High School where tonight the Don Darrow Oaks take on the Athens Red Hawks. The Oaks have had their trouble this year uh, and so have the Red Hawks. Really, it's a rebuilding year for them. Yeah, neither team is playing for a league title or state playoffs or anything like that. In Athens' case, they are playing for homecoming. You don't want to lose on homecoming. Don Darrow's had a little trouble with injuries all year. They didn't have a lot of kids to start out with. and. You know, when you don't have a lot of kids, they get hurt in practice, they get hurt in games. Their big key is number 36, Sean Mascaro. He's their best offensive player, probably their best defensive player. He plays on the field at all times, so just because he gets tired, there's always a the chance he can get hurt. On Athens' side, the big guy to look for is number nine, Brent McDonald. He's the leading rusher in all of Oakland County, obviously the guy that their offense is built around. Okay, there's some of the big names. It's homecoming night here at Troy Athens High School. We'll be back with a kickoff right after these messages. Press Perspective with Neil Monroe is an informative talk show that discusses issues often overlooked by broadcast stations. Neil Monroe, the editor of the Oakland Press newspaper, will keep you abreast on hot topics, events, and issues taking place in Oakland County. So for news you can use, join Neil Monroe every week on the Oakland Press Perspective, Friday night at 8.30 on TCI 63. TCI Sports Game of the Week. This week we're at Athens High School here in Troy, Michigan for homecoming night for the Red Hawks. Dave Zorn along with Joe Abramson here for this contest between the Oaks and the Athens Red Hawks. Don Darrell one and five in the conference, two and five overall. Athens coming into this game, three and three in the conference and three and four overall. And as we mentioned in the open, a rebuilding season for the Red Hawks who are Generally challenging the Colts for uh, the Battle of Troy, which we will have next week. And on the other side, the Oaks, and we see uh, Fred Fuhr hiding behind his assistant coach there as he walks away. There's Fred right in the center of your screen with the hood on. And uh, his team having a little trouble, mainly because of the size of the team, not that many players enrollment-wise, and then injuries. Yeah, I mean, this is a school, a program that only a few years ago made the playoffs in two consecutive seasons. You know, it's not coaching, it's not the ability of the particular kids, it's just the numbers that you have. And as you see John Walker, the coach for uh, Troy Athens. And Athens, again, uh, young team, three and three, and uh, three and four. You know, I'm, I'm guessing that Oxford High must be playing a Saturday game because uh, John Walker's son, Jim, is uh, one of the star running backs for Oxford. In fact, scored a touchdown last year in the state championship when they won the title. And he had changed all the home dates for Athens this year, as you see this big homecoming crowd. But he had changed all their home dates so that he could see his kid play, which is, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have done the same thing. But Norm, that meant they were almost always playing on a Saturday with the exception of a Thursday game against Groves because mm -hmm. that was what the Groves coach apparently wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, don't ask me why. But... Uh, I'm guessing that Oxford must be playing Saturday, so he didn't have to switch this game. That's it. The field conditions are going to be a problem here tonight, Joe. The, here we see the uh, prints, I should say, of, of our truck where it got stuck earlier today. You can see a lot of help from the football players in trying to get our truck out of there. The freshman team down there helping us uh, get out of the mud. And really, it's not that much better on the field. Uh, we walked across that field, and there are a few spots that you can see, even at, I think, the 35-yard line to your left, that are just terrible. And, you know, I think they did run a tractor over this to try to flatten it out, but all that did was, I think, make it more bumpy. But you have to do that because the field doesn't drain well. And the problem now is uh, here's where you get a lot of injuries, as oh, you mentioned, down on the field. Uh, there are a lot of ruts down in there, so we hope that uh, the players can avoid that and uh, stay healthy down there tonight. Yeah, and this is one game where every person running will look slower than he really is. And we're ready for the kickoff. It'll be Brian Schiller to do the kicking, number 25. He does the kicking and the punting 
for the Red Hawks. And we are underway at Athens High School. Kickoff yeah. taken by Tillotson at the five yard line. And Tillotson, the quarterback, brings it out to about the 25 yard line. Yeah, Tillotson's played about every position this year. He's really their best wide receiver. And uh, through injuries and other things, he's now their starting quarterback. And as Fred Fear told us, he can't throw to himself. I guess only Steve Young can do that. Yeah. See him bring the ball right up the middle, getting as much yardage as he can. And he did break one tackle and got the ball up to the 25. But Tillotson, I guess, you know, they have had a few problems in recent games with guys holding on to the ball. But going in, they probably all thought they were going to be secondary receivers. Now they're all primary guys. Exactly. And now Tillotson becomes the quarterback. Tillotson handing off to Mascaro on the first carry. And Mascaro carries for a few yards on the first down carry. Picks up about two or three. Let's see. We'll give him about three yards. It'll be second and seven. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see uh, Stroinski, quarterback for Athens, warming up. It's going to be hard for guys to break long plays unless the defenders also fall in all the muck out there. Tillotson, again, the handoff to Mascaro. Same play. He busts this one open for a big first down. And he's across the 40-yard line to about the 41. And as I say, that the guy runs for about 12 yards. And I guess... Is a useless point. Let's take but a look. He just cuts up real quick, gets a few good blocks, and tries to get as much as he can. And again, you know, you're not gonna. It's gonna be harder to break away once you get through that initial uh, group of tacklers, only because you can't. It's not. You're not running on a hard enough surface to do it. So Mascaro picks up the first down ball about the 42. First and ten there. And again, the workhorse takes it off to the right side this time, and not much there. Well, that was actually... Uh, oh, that was 28, I believe, Sean Goldman. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give the guy a break sometime. Let him rest. <laughs> Let's take a look. Yeah, here, they smelled that out right from the beginning. Goldman had nowhere to go. You see number 35 there for uh, Athens. Uh, Matt Schiffer making the tackle. Second down and 11, loss of a yard on the play. Athens stays onside, and they get an even a bigger loss now as they knock Mascaro back for yeah. two or three yards. Now you're in a situation where it's about third and 14. And one of the things about, you know, and it depends on who your quarterback is, and obviously Tillotson hasn't been the starter all year, where you want to throw on first or second down is that if you get in this situation on third, they know you've got to pass. And sometimes maybe your best bet is a screen pass or a draw only because the defense will be sitting, you know, almost in a nickel. But here I think they are forced to throw the ball. There's Chris Tillotson on a third and 14 situation. Goes to the air, has it, a little bit of time, and now scrambles to get loose. And overthrows his intended receiver, Brad Richardson. That might have been an intentional overthrow. Yeah. You can see the guy's not going to get the first down for you. Don't try to force a play where, you know, especially when you're thrown out into the flats, where if you make a bad pass and they pick it off, there's nobody on the offense able to come back and get the interceptor. Here you just you look, you scramble a little bit, try to buy some time. Nobody open, you just throw it away. The guy he looks like he's thrown to was triple covered. He wouldn't have got the first down. Not a bad play by Tillotson. And a fourth and 14 now for Dondero. Punting back there is Richardson. High snap, but he'll have time to get it off as Athens was not applying any pressure, but they'll remember that next time. On the return now. Number 32, and a flag looks like a yeah, flag is well, down. You know what I'm guessing happened? I was looking all over for a flag. When a punter takes that half second to wait, a lineman's going to release downfield, and there's probably an ineligible man downfield on Don Darrow's part. The only other thing that he could have called from back there would be an invalid fair catch signal, which I didn't, I didn't notice if he'd done that or yeah. not. It was Smith on the return, Jeff Smith, number 32. Now apparently that's not a flag. It sure looks like a flag from here, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> I mean, you see it on the screen. That looked like a flag. Let's take a look. No, it is not a flag. Uh, it was there already. Okay. Well, it looks, it's yellow. Yeah. <laughs> There's something on the field down there. You got a good field a position. Now we're going to get a chance to see the uh, top running back statistically in Oakland County. First and 10 for the Red Hogs. But first. <laughs> and a good strong carry there by Matt Schiffer. I guess next time we'll see McDonald. Which isn't a bad way to go when everyone knows what's coming. And obviously, maybe it is better to go with something else. Here's, Here's just Schiffer. A, a quick hitter, breaks a tackle there, and just busts it out. Once you get through that initial cut, the initial tackle, it's pretty much up to the running back to find the hole. Did a good job, got about eight yards. Second down and a short two here for the Red Hawks. 
Big first down carry. Brent McDonald is the one to watch, number nine. Back to pass. He's got his man open and just overthrows him. Intended down there for Jeff Smith, the wide receiver. Yeah, he had his choice there. He had 44 uh, Stern open across the middle, but obviously if you complete this pass here to Smith, it's a touchdown. Just overthrew him a little bit. Not a bad idea though. Second and two, second and one. That's the time to throw deep. Because you're going to come back third and one. You can still get that. Stroinski, the quarterback, the senior. Yeah, this is probably a situation where we're going to see them go with their unbalanced line, kind of give away where they're going. But that doesn't matter because if you're, you know, you're going for a yard, you're not trying to bust a long play here. Third and about two. Strinsky trying to draw him off. Now, carrying for the first down is Matt Schiffer and the Red Hawks pick up the first down as they needed. Schiffer initially got hit by number 48. Who, uh, let's see, that is uh, Carraway, Jason Carraway, and had him stopped and he just kept his legs moving and spun his body around and actually landed on his back to get the first down. That's just, you know, one guy trying to outmuscle the other. And we saw 48 Carraway on the other side. And Stroinski, good height for a quarterback. He can see downfield. It gives him a good advantage on pass plays. Yeah, 6'3", 175 pounds, a senior. Yeah, the taller you are, it's easier just to see over your lineman. First and 10 now. Red Hawks again to the pass and complete to Smith. Smith shakes off one tackle and keeps going. And finally, it takes about four Oaks to get him down. Yeah, Smith wide open on the play, and then he gave... Uh, but every quarterback loves what they call wrap, run after catch. It helps your statistics out. A good slant in pattern, and he was wide open. Let's take a look, Joe. Oh, yeah, just a quick three-step drop, not even that. Hits him real quick, and he makes this quick cut right here to avoid the tackle, and could have been a face mask, but almost busted that. But still, again, not only gained about 20 on the play, gained eight yards after he caught the ball. That brings him to about the 35-yard line of the Oaks. First and 10 there on a draw. And McDonald, he, yeah, he was strung up with a face mask, but look at him go inside the 20 to about the 15-yard line, and they're going to tack a face mask on this. Yeah, that's, how, that's how you get the kind of rushing statistics that he has. You just never, keep, you never stop your legs from moving until they got you down. You know, a lot of guys, after the initial contact, will just kind of lunge a little bit Let's you hear the in. call down in the field, Joe. We got a face mask on White. Refused. First down. Okay, so they refuse the penalty. Let's take a look. It comes right off the bat. Yeah, apparently you can't tack that on to the end of the play. Yeah, right here is where it's going to happen. He just <laughs> spun away from that and kept his legs moving all the way. Broke a tackle right there. And, you know, he probably picked up at least... 10, maybe 15 yards that he probably shouldn't have just by keeping his legs moving. Yeah, good effort. A lot of backs would have gone down with that initial face mask. Handoff and uh, really just losing his footage, and that is because of that ground, and uh, McDonald goes down yeah, right before he gets in the line of scrimmage. A little frustrated. That's kind of an interesting play. It looked like he was trying to sell an option and then went with a quick dive. There we see Fred Fuhr on the far sideline, head coach of the Oaks. And Stroinski trying to get his team going here. Second and 10. And the field condition will probably have a bigger part in this game than we thought as we saw a slip up right there on a basic dive. Yeah, I would look for a good scoring game today. Pass going out in the flat. Wide open is number 20, and that is Wickhouse, or Wickhouse rather. Wickhouse. Brian Wickhouse. Uh, Let's take a look. Yeah, really, he was wide open again. There you see, looked off left, throws the defenders, and then he hits him out to the right, and he almost got in for the touchdown. Passing might be a good idea in, this, in these kind of conditions because it's the one area where the offense has the advantage only because the receiver knows where he's going and the defender doesn't, and the defender's got to react, and on this kind of ground, it's real hard to do. First and goal from the four-yard line. The straight dive and nothing there. On the carry was number nine, McDonald, yeah. Brent McDonald. McDonald at 5'11", 185, not real big. And when you're down near the goal line, you want just your biggest, strongest guy to try to bull over for that yard. He still, you know, looks like, you know, from what we saw in that first run, that he's able to kind of break some tackles. But now you're going against more of a goal line defense rather than an honest defense that you see at midfield. 
three backs in the backfield, sort of a power left. As we have a slot man right behind the guard, between the guard and the tackle, and that's where they go. And McDonald gets in for the touchdown. Two yard run for Brent McDonald. Yeah, you just go with that power, uh, power offensive backfield that they had, kind of gave away what they were doing, but it didn't matter. Let's take a look. There you see everybody knew it was coming left. They knew which hole he was going over, and that's pretty much just saying, Here's, here it's coming, try to stop it. And for two yards, it's pretty hard for a defense to do that. So McDonald gets the Athens Redhawks on the board first, 6 0, and now the extra point attempt by Brian Schiller. And McDonald holding. I wonder, it'd probably be tough to kick in this field, too. Yeah. Let's see. It is Doesn't up. look too tough. That looked good. As he powers it through, Schiller, a strong kicker, strong leg, puts him up 7 to nothing now. And that's where we leave it here in the first quarter with 5.15 left. The Athens Redhawks lead 7 to nothing over the Oaks. And the Redhawks, uh, very strong offense there in that first possession. Oh, yeah, they, they moved the ball at will and showed a nice combination of running and passing. And, uh, you know, they've got to get everything together, together today because next week is the big game with Troy. And both these teams have an opportunity to play a little bit of spoiler. Uh, Dondero against Kimball, who cannot afford to lose if they have any hope of making the state playoffs, whereas if Kimball wins their last two, I would think they're going to make it just based on who the teams ahead of them and who they're playing and who they should lose to. And uh, Troy and Troy Athens, Troy's undefeated and should go to the state playoffs, but in their region, you pretty much have to go undefeated or you won't make it. So they've got to beat Athens next week. And there it is. Next week, Athens, the Red Hawks visit the Troy Colts. And that'll be on Saturday and Monday night at 7 p.m. right here on TCI 63. Yeah, of course, Athens tonight, you know, you don't want to lose homecoming. That's kind of a... And on the other side, as an opponent, though, you do like to ruin a team's homecoming. That's, uh, <laughs> people, some people I know take a lot of pride in that. Mm -hmm. Low line drive kick, taken at about the seven yard line by Tillotson. Tillotson across the 25 and gets about to the 30 yard line, and that's where the Oaks will start. Not bad field position. That's Tillotson has uh, brought a pretty good uh, run back to the couple of times. Yeah, right? that's the second time he's done that. He does just what you're taught to do. Just get it up there as quick as you can, and don't don't try to make a bunch of moves near the goal line. See what you can get initially, and then try to break it out. And that's, that's how you're going to break long kick returns, not with a bunch of fancy stuff early. First and 10 now for the Nandero Oaks, and Fred Fuhr sends out Tillotson, Mascaro, and uh, also number 28 in the backfield, Sean Goldman. He's got two tight ends. And a straight dive by number 36, and that is Sean Mascaro. His number will be called often tonight. He's a workhorse out there. Yeah, you're looking at probably 35, 40 carries for him tonight which uh, not only is going to make him tired offensively, that's going to significantly uh, impair his defensive abilities. And at some point, they're going to have to at least try and have a passing game. Tillotson can throw. The uh, Oaks have had trouble catching the wall this season, according to Fred Fuhr. Just been dropping some passes. Mascaro on the sweep, and he is covered by the Red Hawks. He didn't get much blocking there from uh, the lead back or from the, uh, the guys on the end of the line. You know, you're going to pretty much give him a naked sweep almost where he had no... Uh, Let's take a look at in front of him. Yeah, the Red Hawks just follow him out there. Yeah, and even the linebackers come in on him, and there's, you know, there's nothing but red there. Gain of another couple of yards. It'll be third and six coming up. And the Oaks here to the short side of the field. This is the way they run. They try to get it up the middle, but uh, the Red Hawks just swarm into the backfield and stop Mascaro Colder. Rather, it was number 28 that time. Yeah, three downs Sean and Goldman. Out. Three downs and out. Basically, uh, some uh, basic fundamental running plays. And uh, Athens, I think, is going to just play them for that until they show they can do something else. Head coach John Walker. Sending the plays in, uh, talking to his. And here's the punt by Richardson. A low line drive punt, and it's taken at about the 21-yard line by Smith. Smith runs right into the Oaks. 
and uh, is down at about the 26 yard line. Yeah, well, he, it looked like there was a hole there very briefly, but there was too many oaks there. They closed it up and now they get the ball back on their own 25, but that's about where they were before and didn't have much trouble moving the ball. Last week, we saw the Troy Colts on every possession get into the end zone. Every possession they had, I believe, but one, they got into the end zone. You did the Troy game? And uh, all by myself. And uh, now the Athens Redhawks uh, might be up to that challenge here. They uh, looked very strong in that first possession. Let's see if they can do it again. Two receivers split up top. As Stroyinski calls the signals, and he may run out of time here soon. Yes, he does. Now, we don't have a clock like they do in the pros uh, to let you know uh, how much time is running out, but you can just sense time running out. Now you can hear the call down there. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's not, not uncommon on the first play of a possession just because you've got to get everybody out there. Athens scoring on nine plays, 48 yards, and eating up the clock for four minutes and 27 seconds. And they're, you know, if they can keep doing that, it's not going to be a blowout score if they were to win, but the yardage probably will be dominant. Storinsky now has a pro formation, drops back and has a draw play. McDonald right up the middle, and he'll try to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, you just want to get yourself to second and 10. Now maybe you come back with a pass, see if something's open. That slant's been open. Maybe go with a quick hitter over the middle. But McDonald, you know, you give him a shot on first and 15 when the defense maybe think thinking pass a little bit more. McDonald coming into the game, one of the leading rushers in the county. The leading rusher. The leading rusher. And back to Pastorinsky, quick one. Again, the slant in, and it works for a first down. First down for the Red Hawks. Let's take a look. I'm guessing that they're gonna run a, a hitch and go with that. Instead of having him run a slant, they're gonna have him run out and fake it, and he's gonna be wide open deep. Right there was Ian Jones, number 27. He, uh, had seen that play previously and said, I'm not going to let you take off like he did last time. But he does pick up the first down on the reception. Last time, he added another 20 yards after the catch. First and 10 now. Ball at about the 37-yard line. Stroinski on the handoff to McDonald, trying to cut the corner and then trying to cut back, but was met hard there by Mascaro. Yeah, Mascaro along with Henry, Corey Henry, really laid him out. Still gained about four yards. Though. Are you the Troy Kimball by yourself? Yeah, tough game. Wow. <laughs> yeah, here you see him just break it to the outside. Mascaro's going to hit him low in the front, and uh, Henry's going to come from behind and finish him off right there. A sandwich there by Mascaro and Henry, and it'll bring up second and six now, four yards on the game, and two receivers now up top for Stroinski. He'll go to the air, and he looks again, the slanted pattern. Oh. He had two receivers out there. It went just out of the reach of Smith, and uh, he could have had Wyckoff on the outside. Yeah, I think there's a mix-up on that. Uh, those guys are too close together. Some, somebody ran wrong. I'm not even sure which guy he was throwing to. Some line was on perfect line for both of them. Yeah. It stops the clock with 33 seconds here in the first quarter, and you can see the large homecoming crowd here at Troy Athens High School. Yeah, that large homecoming crowd kind of made me a little late getting here. They, <laughs> they tied up all of John R. <laughs> they had cops out there blocking the street off with cones and everything. I thought you were going to pull a Scotty Pippen on me. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a fumble. A fumble down on the field, and the Dondero Oaks come up with it. Yeah, that was uh, the first time we've seen Kohlenberg run the ball. And... Um, yeah, all of a sudden, you know, the ball just fell out of his hands. Good hit right there. Popped him right where the ball was, and the recovery taken by number 82, and that's Brad Richardson. That's Richardson guy. recovers. He's the guy who caused the fumble, too. And now the Oaks have some good field position where they can maybe try a few uh, more risky plays. Tillotson now back to pass, and they do. First down, they go to the air, and it's complete out there to number 80, Kevin Shaw. Yeah, it's just common sense that, you know, you try these type of things in the other guy's territory only because if you do turn it over, they're not going to score on the next play most likely, whereas if you do it in your own territory, you're in a lot of trouble. Run the same thing Athens is running. Quick slant, got him a first down. On the tackle, number 83, Brad Baker. A good job by Tillotson 
as we end the first quarter of play here at Athens High School, seven to nothing, the Red Hawks lead. But it was a good job by Tillotson on that last play to look the other way and have the defense concentrate on that side and then come back and throw to the yeah, other side. Same thing we saw Stroyansky do down near the goal line. You, know, you look him off real quick and uh, you know, it, it'll always open somebody up when you do that. And don't forget to tune in right after tonight's game to the Roadshow video program. And that's on every Saturday, Monday at 9 p.m. right after the ball game. And Brad and Pat, or Bubba, excuse me, and Pat take you to Almond, Michigan this month to uh, check out that game of paintball that is so much fun. And uh, I know uh, you haven't been out there yet, but I, no. I know you're trying to get some uh, friends out there. Yeah, I want to be out there. I mean, that's, you know, the show. I mean, are they showing any white zombie videos on that show yet? I don't think so. Oh, okay. But they did move your favorite show, Beavis and Butthead, to a later time. I know, time. I know. Well, so they had to. I think that is good. I think it's, I think it's good. I'm glad they did that. <laughs> Here are the uh, Dondero Oaks inside the 30 at about the 25, and they're on the move. The screen to Mascaro, but a good thing he overthrew him because there's nothing but Red Hawks all around him. And uh, he better have thrown it away because he was going to get sacked by either number 83 or 45, and that's Kohlenberg or uh, Brad Baker. Yeah, it's not easy for a quarterback, especially in high school, to sell a screen. And then when they're blitzing linebackers, it's almost impossible. The idea with the screen is that the, the linemen got, have got to let everybody in. And then you just sneak the back behind them. But if the linebackers are blitzing, the rest of the linemen aren't coming in anyway, and that just throws the whole playoff. Second and 10 now. Just underway in the second quarter. Tillotson has to scramble. That was a design play. And uh, he was supposed to take two, two steps back as a drop back and then just take off. And then things start to break Watch. down right there's away. Nothing, look, he, he looks to go up and there's nothing there. And he's got he's to improvise on the draw. And he did a pretty good job of doing that. Picked up five yards. It's third and five now. Yeah, and unless you've got a great kicker here in four down territory. One, or 11.25 rather, here in the second quarter. And the Oaks on the move. Tillotson will take off again. Saw a lot of room right up the middle. He pays the price, but it looks like. Oh, he got it. Yeah, he did pick up the first down by uh, oh, about a couple yards. So good, smart, heads up play by Tillotson, but he, uh, he was hit pretty well in the head there. Let's take a look. He's got his helmet off right now, and the official's calling the timeout. Right there. And uh, I'll tell you, if the official is going to call that an injury timeout, he's got to come out. Apparently, he's calling that an equipment timeout so he can stay in the game. Yeah, I think he was hit right where his uh, chin strap and where the face mask are, and that kind of knocked things off for him. So Tillotson, he's still having a little trouble there, as you can see. Yeah, his head's probably ringing. First and 10. Oaks on the move. Proof set, and Tillotson goes the handoff to Masco, and he goes down. He might have got a yard or two. Basically, they've been running a couple of uh, pass plays, a couple of uh, deception pass plays, no quarterback draw and such. Figure, keep the defense on us, come back with what you've been doing early in the game. You, never, you, know, you just might break it, or you end up losing a yard as they did that time. Let's take a look now, the Oaks. Can smell that end zone. They want to tie it up here. Two men in the backfield for the Oaks. Mascaro and number 28, Goldman. Mascaro cuts back. He's got some room and gets inside the five yard line. Boy, and a first down. Great cut by Mascaro. And on that, you know, we, that's about where we were standing when we were talking to Fred Fuhr. Uh, people watching just don't know how hard that cut was. You can see it. In fact, he's flapping his arm up in the air, kind of like yeah. the Three Stooges there, and <laughs> trying to get some balance, still really. still about that, that all-night curly thing that you're missing, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm upset kinda, about that. Kind of like me missing Beavis and Butthead, right? Yeah. yeah although, I, I would never burn down a house. <laughs> Fred Fuhr looks on as his uh, Dondero team getting close. Very close. Mascaro oh. hit immediately there by number 35, Matt Schiffer. Schiffer getting in there quickly. I'm going to guess they're going to have to throw to get that ball in the end zone. To get, again, you get down to the goal line area. The defense changes. They're going to bring their linebackers up closer. Their D-backs are up closer. It's just harder to gain two and three yards on a run. Here we see Johnny Walker looking on. 
9.25 left in the second quarter, and the Dondero Oaks trying to capitalize on a turnover by the Red Hawks. Second and goal. The pitch to Mascaro trying to break it outside and getting in there quickly. Number 44, and that is Mark Sturm. Yeah, I mean, Athens knows what's coming. And again, you know, they don't even have to worry about anybody going deep or too much deception because you're down near the goal line. You've got to come up probably, especially here on third down and goal at the eight, they're going to have to come up with a pass play there. They smelled that out from the start. And again, we see them trying to run that sweep right. It doesn't work. It didn't work in the first quarter either. Big down here for the Oaks. They've got to get in the end zone or face a fourth down. Third and seven. Tillotson to throw. And it's incomplete. 84 was there. Steve Hoff. Now Hoff knocked the receiver down, but it, the pass looked like it was not a catchable ball. But in high school, that doesn't matter. If, if he knocked him down, in high school, the ball does not have to be catchable. You hit a receiver, it's interference. And uh, No call was made. Yeah, I think the, the only logic, or you know, not to question the ref, but if the quarterback is hit as he throws it, that affects the flight of the ball. And if anything like that, or a tip ball, anything like that happens, then all those things are done. You can't interfere with the guy. Everyone's going for it. And he did get hit as he threw it. Okay. Clock, 8.35. Fourth down. Fourth down and a must down for the Oaks. Let's take a look on the far sideline. Oh, a, a flag. flag. Uh, a flag down. Now, that, if that's on Athens, they're going to have first and goal at about the one. The pass was complete to Mascaro. Let's see what the call is. Now, down there, it's either a hold or a late hit or a face mask. It's only three things that it could be. It's against Athens. The Red Hawks wow. will have to defend the end zone one more time, looks like. That's, uh, that's about as big a mistake as you can make. Let's hear the call. We got a pick. Ball foul. Right here, Steve. Yeah. So it's a face translated, mask. Yeah, translated, that's face mask. Uh, okay. Let's take a look. Here's the pass. Mascaro open. Now he's got a blocker in front of him. This helps him. Or does it? No, the blocker didn't do him any good well, out there. I'll tell you, the blocker, <laughs> he was smart. If he had blocked, he'd have clipped. Yeah. He was behind him. And, you know, he was standing I thought he was just on the inside of him. That's where yeah. I thought he was out there for to, uh, from this distance, right, it now, looked like he was set up to block. Here's where I thought a face mask was a personal foul that made it an automatic first down. Apparently not. That makes it a fourth down again. I think they might want to double check the rules. You know, last week at a Seaholm Berkeley game on a fourth down, there was a face mask that did not give the team the first down, but the fact that it was a personal foul, the ref made it a first down. Maybe, maybe that ref was wrong. I don't know. Well, the timeout call down on the field with a fourth down. And we'll see where they mark it. Right now it's standing at fourth and four. And the referee's discussing everything down on the I, field. And this one official is going to come over to their huddle, and he, or to the coach, and tell them. Yeah. I don't know what the ruling is going to be, but they're going to explain everything to him right now. Well, he's down on the sideline and talking to one of the other coaches, not to John Walker. Now they're shaking hands. Okay. Maybe they're just making <laughs> plans for after the game. <laughs> All right, so they're keeping it fourth down. Wow. I always thought all personal fouls made it a automatic first down. Maybe, maybe there's, maybe that's not a personal foul if it's not flagrant or something. Like the NFL, I don't know. Well. Whatever, it's fourth down and goal. They're, they're going down over again. They're not marking yeah. it where he caught it or where he came down. That's not right either. Yeah. You get the play plus the yardage. That's that's another thing I thought. And I'm I'm just wondering because uh, Fred Fuhrer is not debating the call. Yeah, I think, Till it's in the pass. I He's think, getting pressure. He is under pressure. He's up down. He's down. He ends up touchdown, oh. but a flag down That'd also. Be, that should be roughing the passer, though, where they threw it. It's either roughing the passer or a clip on 72. But. Kevin Shaw in the end zone for the touchdown. The Oaks. Yeah, it's on Athens, and they're just going to decline the penalty. Okay, Tillotson getting the... Wow. Yeah, personal foul, the pass. It's declined, touchdown. There's your call. 
Well, here you see some play action. Everyone knows though, that it's going to be a pass. And that blitz from Athens has been getting in all day. And there, Tillotson's kind of trying to make things up as he goes. Throws the ball. Didn't look like it was really that late of a hit. Doesn't matter. He catches it for a touchdown. That was uh, number 80, Shaw. And, and the extra point now. Yeah, Tillotson makes this. It's a tie game. It's up. It's high enough. And it is good. And we've got a tie game now with 8.22 left here in the second quarter. A big, big play down there. The penalty that allowed the Oaks to get another shot at yeah. getting it in the end zone. And uh, one thing we should say, you know, we, we mentioned earlier that Dondero's had trouble hanging on to the ball. We better give credit to these guys. They haven't had any trouble today. No, the not passes at all. that have been to the wide receivers have been caught. So Fred Fear practicing on that, and uh, it's worked for it. All tied up here in the second quarter. The mistake by Athens, the fumble, and the Dondero Oaks capitalize on that. Also, another key mistake on fourth down, a face mask mistake by uh, uh, the uh, Red Hawks, and the Oaks capitalizing on that as well. Yeah, and we're still not sure if it was a, a rule uh, interpretation mistake yeah, by it, the officials or not. In, uh, didn't matter. It didn't matter because they got in the end zone anyway. So no argument there from anybody. It'll be number 82, Richardson, to kick off. That's the guy that covered the fumble to set all that up. And this is taken at about the 10-yard line by Jeff Smith. Smith down just over the 30-yard line, so good return there for Smith. Effort. And that's where the Red Hawks will start. First time we've seen him return a kick. We've seen him do a good job on the few punts that he's returned. That's right. The Dondero scoring drive, 11 plays for 38 yards, and about the same time as it took the uh, Red Hawks to get down, 429. Yeah, both teams with drives of, well, 9 and 11 plays respectively and under 50 yards in doing so. So field position has obviously been key. Very big. Ball at about the 32 yard line. The handoff goes to McDonald. McDonald to break it outside. He's got the first down and more. Finally brought down at about the 47 yard line, close to the 50, maybe the 49. That's a great run. <laughs> you see how fast he's moving out on that he's stuff? On, on that field, he really took off. The ball just shy of the 50 at the 49. Let's take a look, Joe. And here's just a basic off tackle run. Gets a good block right there, opens him up, and he takes it to the outside and gets out of bounds eventually, but he's moving pretty good for uh, the conditions that are out there. Might not be quite as bad towards midfield, but still, that's a great run out there. Yeah, ball just shy of midfield. That's where he went out of bounds. Stroinski to throw. He's got a man on the far sideline, and again, just out of the reach of Smith. That's twice he's had him. It's just inches away. It's, you know, that's just a matter of timing and you know not it's to, a long throw too uh, yeah you know he really got that one in the air you know, not not to keep uh, beating a dead horse but that can be the field again just causing the receiver to run slower you know you work these timing things out in practice and you know when to throw it and when to release it and maybe normally he's there i got to figure this field's slowing him up at least a half step and that's all he missed it by but ball I'm, just shy of the 50 yeah. second and 10. i'd say i'm sure they're going to come back to that play though because the receiver is beating the defender yeah Twice now, it's happened. Pro set for the Red Hawks. Stravinsky on a draw, play to McDonald. McDonald, first down again, breaks it outside. He could go all the way. Let's see if someone can catch him. Touchdown, Athens. Now he went right up the gut, took it. He obviously likes cutting left. That's what he's doing every time he gets the ball. It looked like number 12, Logan, was going to get him. Turned on the afterburners, he was gone. 50 yards and a touchdown for McDonald. Let's take a look. Yeah, he wasn't that fast, but look at that. <laughs> Cuts right through. Now he breaks it out. And you're going to see number 12 look like he's about to catch him. And all of a sudden, he turns it on and he's gone. There makes a nice cut just to lose a tackle there. And look, it looks like he's about to get caught right there. Yeah, and then and he all turned sudden, it on. Yeah, all of a sudden, he's gone. He did. You could see that extra. Burst of energy there, and he just took off. Yeah, this guy came into the game with 933 yards. And with that run, and with what he's done already, if he's not at 1,000 yet, he's one or two carries away. The extra point is good, and it's 14 to 7. So the Red Hawks answer 
to the Nondero Oaks, and they come right back with a touchdown, a 50-yard run, and the second touchdown for McDonald. Yeah, you know, you, you want to know about you know running for a thousand yards. You always hear about that, you know, in the NFL and college and everything. NFL guys get 16 games to do that. This guy's gonna, whether he has or hasn't, he's obviously gonna break a thousand tonight. Doing that in eight games, that's a little more impressive than, uh, you know, not to take anything away from NFL guys, but high school guys that get a thousand yards, they don't have a lot of games to do that. No. Not uh, 16 games. No. There you see the view from down on the, uh, the field as uh, the parents get into the action. Uh, Videotaping homecoming here. Three plays for Athens as they go 67 yards and total time off the clock, a minute 30 on that drive. So the Athens Redhawks can score quickly. Yeah, I think they got, maybe got a wake up call in that last uh, Dondero scoring drive. Now it's up to Dondero to keep it going. Tillotson's had some great kick returns already to see if he can get another one here. 7-10 left here in the second quarter. The kickoff from Chalair taking it about the 12-yard line. And a nice return, although he's going across field. Now he cuts up field and breaks it. Jason Carraway on the return, and boy, that return seemed to take forever. It seemed to take just forever. I was gonna say, just one guy away, I think, from scoring. Let's take a look. That's a great return. Just shy of the 30-yard line is where he got. Yeah, he tries to get it to the midfield where you can see everything, see how the blocking's going. Looks like he's got a hole there and bumps into his own guy right about here. That kind of ends that side of the field. He looks the other way. Suddenly there's nothing to the left. And these last couple of guys, I'm not sure who it is that grabs him right there. 84 for uh, Athens. That's uh, Steve Hoff. Hoff. Might have been a touchdown saving tackle. First and 10 for the Oaks. Tillotson to throw, drops back again, and he is dropped by number 35, Matt Schiffer. That looks like another quarterback draw. Either that or they're just getting through so quick that he doesn't even have time to think about throwing. Let's take a look. Yeah, see, he looks, yeah, I can't tell whether he was really going to run a quarterback draw or if he just was trying to avoid an oncoming lineman. Yeah, it looks similar to that one play where he did intentionally run. Quickly thrown. Somebody get, hey, hey, look at this. Is that pie? Oh. <laughs> or shaving. At, at Michigan games, they throw marshmallows. He's too young to shave. Nice spin by Mesco to get a good chunk of that yardage back. Oh, yeah. They're going to have about third and about two. It was second and 15, and Mascaro took off, and a good spin to break off the tackle and gain about 10 yards after that. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've seen... Uh, I've never seen a pie thrown at a football game before. You know, if you, if you go to a Brother Rice game, the opponents throw rice at every game. That's, you know, real original. And, uh, you know, Michigan throws marshmallows, but a, a full pie, that's new. That's yeah. impressive. Guys, it could have been shaving cream. He was too young to shave. That's creative, too. <laughs> Third and two. Very short two. And a first down. Nobody really yeah, the, touching uh, Mascara on that one. He just dove forward and some confusion on the line, uh, the defensive line that time. A lot of deception. What they did, they brought uh, Sean Goldman in motion almost next to the tight end, and then they they just run a, a quick dive and still run out the fake of a handoff going right. And they led the blocks out there, and you see all these guys leaning out towards that side of the line thinking that's where the ball is, and all they needed was two yards, and they got it. So the Oaks on the move again now at about the 42-yard line. Tillotson to throw, deep, he's got his man, but then there's coverage down there also, and almost intercepting it is number 12, Eric Lidke. Lidke down there. He had a shot down there, and he was covered well. That's just, you know, pretty much a good play by Lidke, a good effort on Dondero's part. Let's take a look. You know, it's not interference here. We mentioned about the ball not needing to be catchable. It's not interference here, though. Because in the ref's judgment, both guys are just going for the ball, so you can't call interference in that situation, even though he did kind of bump into Lidke. Now they confused our camera folks up there, too, so good deception there on that play. Yeah, that's hard to do. Yeah. We usually get them for you. So, tough, tough play that time. And here's a tough play for the Oaks as uh, they get uh, stopped cold on this drive, yeah, or gold. on that dive, I should say. Yeah, Goldman. Never really had a chance on that. He got hit right when he got to the line of scrimmage. 
did a good job to gain a yard. On that previous play, Lutke is a sophomore, 5'7", 150, at defensive back, getting some action in here in the varsity game. Yeah, he got called up to varsity uh, some point in the middle of the season, started out on the JV level. Tillotson looking at third and nine. Getting pressured, unloads, and it goes out of bounds in the direction of Kevin Shaw and also out there just a little further was Ryan Parsons, number 25. Yeah, Shaw slipped a little bit. I don't know if maybe he was running a different route or if, you know, you're a lot of times you're kind of given the option on cutting the route off. Maybe he's, maybe what he read was to cut the route off. Tillotson was being rushed. He couldn't read anything. He just had to throw the ball out there. So that might have just been a little confusion there where I think Shaw was the intended receiver and not number 25, Parsons. And here we go. The Oaks to punt now in a fourth and nine. Back to receive is Smith, number 32. This will go short. Smith will take it, though. He'll let it go. It just didn't get to him. It just died at about the 21-yard line. Yes. He's one of the smarter guys I've seen in high school. For some reason in high school football, even though the guys on the receiving team know they don't have to touch a punt, they all stand around the ball. And, uh, you know, coach to like, get away. Just get away. Well, get, I mean, get as far away as you can. I mean, I've even once or twice seen a guy actually pick it up in that situation, try to run, which is really bad. But he did suicide. <laughs> yeah, now, I mean, it's like I'm actually surprised to see somebody do it right. That's pretty good. <laughs> so compliment to Jeff Smith there. And his coaches. Pro set for the Red Hawks. Storinsky to pass. Right down in the middle of the field, and it's in and out of the hands of Weichhaus, Brian Weichhaus, the intended receiver. He had Smith out in the flat, although that's a much tougher pass to make, but there's a flag on the play as well. Let's uh, see the play here, and we'll uh, try to get the call down on the field. And she's trying to read the defense there. He's got Smith wide open. Very few high school quarterbacks, though, can throw a deep out, which is, you know, 15, 20 yards downfield. There, he probably should have caught the ball, though. Good defensive play by Ian Jones. Right, hold. Number. Almost gave the number. Okay, almost gave the number, but uh, Boy, that's that. okay. We know it's uh, it's on red on the offense, and that knocks him back ten yards. It'll be first and twenty. Fred Fuhr on the far sideline. His team down by seven. Good play uh, defensively on that last one by Jones, as he knocked the ball out of White House's hands. Back to pass and oh, it, oh almost a, a, just a spectacular catch there by Smith as he slipped on the ground and tried to get back up to catch it, had it, and then fell again. Let's take a look. Here's the field coming into play again. Right here, I mean, literally as he releases is when Smith falls down. Now you're going to see Smith. He was he had already he had already back fell, on yeah. the ground. He came back up to try to catch it. That's just one of those things where. You know, fate's not with you. Storinsky holds on for a half second longer. He sees that he's down, and then he'll throw out to McDonald in the flat. Instead, it's second down and 20. Yeah, we were talking about field conditions, and that's where it came in right there. It came into play. Second and 20. Storinsky on the draw. McDonald has a lot of room to run. Picks up the old first he's down, picks gone. up a first down, and look out. Oh, finally tripped up at about the 40 yard line of Dondero. Wow. I think it was Jones who made the uh, good tackle. He just made a great play on a uh, on a pass play for Dondero. Now he makes a touchdown saving tackle. Well here, McDonald gets back to the original line of scrimmage. I thought he'd get maybe close to that, but he wow. picks up the whole bundle right here. That's okay. where he took off. And once again, we see he cuts up the middle and all, he's, every time we've seen him cut out to the left side, it's just probably in, in his instincts to do that and it's working for him. And if he wasn't over a thousand before, he's obviously over a thousand now. Ball just inside the 40 at the 39. Here's a complete pass to number 44, and that is Sturm, Mark Sturm, a defensive linebacker who's been doing so well at that position this time, Joe. Oh, that's just a quick hitter. You know, you, you just scared him to death with the run. Keeping him honest, now you come back with a quick hitter over the middle. You don't even have to throw it hard in that case because the, the defense isn't there. Let him get what he can. Ball at about the 22-yard line, first and 10 there for the Red Hawks, as they're on the move again. The big play is the big run by McDonald to get him out of that uh, deep uh, 
end of the field that they were in. McDonald, or a correction, this is number 45 out there, and that is Kohlenberg. Kohlenberg trying to redeem himself after the fumble that he had last time. Yeah, Let's we, take a look. Yeah, you got to give McDonald a little more rest. The guy just ran 50 yards. I mean, you're letting Kohlenberg get out to the outside, and they just, Don Darrow did a good job just stringing that play out all the way to the sideline. He never had a chance. You know, one of the things that, you know, with a running back like McDonald, whatever your strength is, when you have a, uh, you know, a star on your team, it makes it easier for the other end of the offense. You know, in this case, it's easy for the passing. If, the, you know, if they can convert it now, it's still up to the quarterback to convert it. He's doing a good job of it. McDonald follows his blocker. And uh, he's close to another first down. Yeah, but you know, again, like the point I'm trying to make is where a defense is built around stopping McDonald so much that if Stransky can just execute, it's there. And he's doing a great job of that. You know, if you go, you know, you watch like a, a Brother Ice team that's got a great running back in Marcus Harvey, they should be passing like crazy because defenses aren't respecting the pass. Or um, the other team in Birmingham that passes like crazy, it's easy to run. Third and one, they pick up the first down and more. And it is easy to run. Take a look as McDonald used to be continues to, to ramble. Yeah, the other team in Birmingham used to pass a lot. They don't anymore. But here you have McDonald. Now you get it down near the goal line. You just go with what's gotten you there. But here, I would almost, I wouldn't be surprised to see them bootleg and throw pass. Again, McDonald bounces outside, then cuts back in. That's why I'm not a coach. Is he in for a touchdown? Let's see. No, it'll bring up a second down. McDonald gets down look to. Look that chain is. Well, they're right on the nose of the goal line. Let's take a look and see where he fell. The timeout down on the field. Yeah, he fell right on the line of scrimmage. Didn't even well, break the plane. He's, he's on it, though. It's a touchdown. If the ball touches the line, it's touchdown. Let's we'll see. Well, the marker like it, down yeah. on the side is showing just short of it. Yeah, so I mean, like it matters. Maybe the nose is not touching it. Say, yeah, it matters a whole lot. You, know, you got three plays to gain <laughs> half inch. As Athens calls the timeout, do you know, seeing the uh, preseason um, issue of the Oakland Press, high school football, the best looking uniforms in Oakland County. You know who got that? Right there. Troy Athens Redhawks. Patterned after the San Francisco 49ers. That's right. Of course, now they did not get best helmets. Best helmets went to my alma mater, Pumpkin Heads. Aha, uh -huh, Brother Rice. Yeah, uh, Pumpkins. What was so fancy about their. Uh, just the traditional classic look uh -huh. with the big mean looking Indian on the side. I see, okay. There's that 49er there, look. You see the 49er type uniforms. And uh, I've got to admit, when they first came out with these uh, a couple years ago, they uh, were really classy and uh, they still are. And obviously, they had the Wade bright Wilson yellow. Obviously agrees with you. Yeah, they had the bright yellow previous to this. Which didn't look as good. Didn't look as good as no. this, as the gold. Second. And goal from just a one inch uh, point on the field. And all it is is Smartest. just a matter of <laughs> Stroinski getting the snap and walking one step forward, and he's in. Smartest play call in the world. Touchdown for the Red Hawks, and they're up 20 to 7 with an extra point coming up. Yeah, you know, you go with that sneak. You're that close, you only have to gain a little bit. If you can't get that, you don't deserve it. And the fewer times the ball changes hands, the less likely there is to be a fumble. Now we'll look at the extra point attempt by Schiller. Schiller will uh, kick. He gets a good strong leg into this. Kicks him high, which makes it very difficult to block. Kicks him high, long, far. And just, <laughs> Everything in between. It, this this one may one go into one of the convertibles that are parked in the uh, in the end zone there for the homecoming floats. That'd be kind of cool. Homecoming night here at Troy Athens High School which brings out everybody. Parents, the kids, and of course, the football team. Everybody but the other team. Yeah, generally the other team doesn't. Of course, work. when you only other, have 27 the people, fan. there's only there's not that many parents to come out either. Yeah. Talking about the fans on the other side. You yeah. can see the stands just on the other side of Brian Schiller. Schiller to kick, and oh, did he boom this one. 
but he but missed it. But it's no good. Looked good, though. I mean, it was impressive. He had a lot of leg into it, but just couldn't get it through the uprights. That's one thing I actually, I'm looking forward to next week. Now, Troy's got a kicker that's kicked a few field goals over 40 yards in uh, beams. Oh, that's a nice kicking this week. Let's take a look and see the form of Chalair here. And you can look at that thing take off. That's a rocket, but it, like, it just I went it to the right, as you can see there. But wow. that thing took off so quick. You could see it on the extra or on the replay. And he did not get an extra point out of it. So we stand at 20 to 7, a scoring drive, taking nine plays, 86 yards on that. And the big play, of course, was the McDonald draw, the run that he just took off. And uh, nobody could believe it. And in fact, uh, they almost. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. had him for a touchdown, really. And clearly, like we said, if, if he wasn't already over the 1,000 mark for the year, he is now, and <laughs> it's going to be pretty tough for anybody to beat him in the uh, rushing race in Oakland County. You know, I told you off the air, TCI, we have uh, this season seen the top three statistical running backs in Oakland County in uh, Brent McDonald. Number two is Eric Bogner from Rochester, who we saw against the same Dondero Oaks. That's right. And a game I didn't do, but Jordan Herrick's number third from Birmingham Seaholm. Uh-huh. There's a case one of those guys who's got a quarterback throwing it crazy and makes it real easy to get about eight yards a rush. Yeah. And he's a pretty good running back, too. Yeah, ball taken inside the five. And a nice return again by Jason Carraway. Carraway has had two pretty good returns on the last two kickoffs. I think we are the only cable system though, that's showing all three of the top running backs in Oakland County. Well, that's something to boast about. Exactly. Let's take a look at the return here by Carraway. And it's a guy who <laughs> Carraway almost broke one the last time. We've seen great returns from both him and Tillotson. Of course, when, you know, I guess, you know, idealistically, you don't want to return kicks as a team. You don't want the other team kicking off too much. It just means that they're scoring a lot, but they're doing a good job of it. Back to the action down on the field. It's Mascaro on a run. And Mascaro. Could be the last play of the half. Mascaro carries for about, oh, six yards. It'll be second and four coming up. Clock winding down, 10 seconds left here in the first half. Tillotson to throw. This could be the last play. And it stops the clock with one second left in the half. Yeah, looking for Shaw there, you know, he made a quick slant and tried to cut it out. Didn't, again, just didn't quite get his footing there. And, uh, you know, you know mentioned I don't know how many times, but it, it just, it keeps becoming a factor, the conditions of this field. It's kind of a prayer of a pass, too, but still he wasn't able to get to it, and he had to look up and find the ball in the air before he could even go to it. So one last play here for the Oaks. Will they try to go for some yardage here, or will they just sit on it? Yeah, you might as well go deep, what the heck. <laughs> Tillotson with the pro set. Looks one way, then comes back this way. Shaw has this one intercepted. Look out. Hitting the ground with Steve Hoff. He had some room to run, but lost his footing. We're going to say there's not only one bad thing that could have happened, and it almost did. And that is an interception and a touchdown. Right. I mean, the interception itself is no big deal as long as it doesn't get run back all the way. But when the receiver slips, that leaves him wide open in the flats, and all the offense has to come over from the middle of the field where they had set up the play to make a tackle, but he slipped. Probably would have been tackled anyway, though. And that's where that field uh, comes into play right there, trying to make that cut and falling down. We see the two coaches heading off. Yeah, it's uh, John Walker there. We saw Fred Fuhr. And uh, it's a tighter game than we thought. Uh, the Red Hawks lead 20 to 7 over the Dondero Oaks. The Oaks uh, still showing some promise, still in this game, very, uh, very much in it. Oh, absolutely. You know, they've done probably better than most people expected them to, you know, just with what they've had to go through this season with the few people to start with and then the injuries and everything else. Doing a very good job. So the score at halftime, the Athens Red Hawks 20, the Dondero Oaks 7. We'll be back with halftime stats for you right after these messages. Stay with us. If you wish a video cassette of TCI Sports, the cost is $25. Send a check payable to TCI, along with your name, address, and the names of the teams that played in the game to TCI Sports Videotapes, 4500 Delamere Boulevard, Royal Oak, Michigan, 48073. 
Remember to tell us which game you wish to receive. And thank you for watching TCI Sports. Halftime here at Athens High School where the Red Hawks lead 20 to seven over the Dondero Oaks. And homecoming night here at Athens High School. Let's take a look at the stats here of that first half. Time uh, of domination, uh, both teams pretty much balanced here, except for total yards. As we look, Don Darrow, 64 yards rushing, 20 passing, total of 84. And uh, Athens, a total of 223 with 160 rushing, 63 passing. And uh, first downs, almost even. Turnovers, one apiece. And uh, time of possession right there. Yeah, time of possession, only a couple of minutes difference, really, a minute and a half. As uh, we're going to very quickly take a look at the uh, homecoming queen in her court here at Athens. This was a few moments ago. Yes, uh, I believe it's uh, Sue Anderson, who is our homecoming queen. And the very pretty queen and uh, the homecoming king. Let's see if I can get that name. There, uh, there she is. That's no the and there he is. Mark Sessi, number 43. You see he's overcome with emotion too. And he is the homecoming <laughs> king and the, the guy's giving him a little uh, rub in there. There he is, big smile for us. The homecoming king down there and, and well dressed. Oh, absolutely. Well, hey, they are the best looking uniforms in Oakland That's County. Right. You know, That's right. That's why. Stroinski, the quarterback, number 15 for the Red Hawks warming up down on the sideline. Homecoming night here I think at it, Athens mm, High School. Athens will get the ball to start the half, which, you know, you want you mount a drive here. You don't, you don't quite totally put it out of reach, but you, uh, you make it real tough on the opponent. And the Oaks, who put together one strong drive, although it was on a turnover, and they did pick it up in Athens territory, have yet to put a good strong drive together in their own territory and get something going, and that's what they need. They need to stop the Red Hawks right now on this first possession. This is key. If the Red Hawks get on the board here, Joe. I think uh, that might uh, sort of diminish the hopes a little bit of Absolutely. the Oaks. Absolutely. Of course, you know, Athens hasn't really sustained a long drive either. Their first drive was also under 50, and then it was big plays. You know, a 50-yard touchdown run, and then a 90-yard drive, but most of that came on one play also. So, you know, it's not like uh, Athens has really just marched it up and down the field on them. They've made big plays. Yeah. And, you know, that's got to be a, not so much a consolation, but maybe give a little confidence to Don Darrow. They uh, would really like to key on some of the key big playmakers, and that is uh, McDonald. Brent McDonald has put together some big plays for him, and that has helped quite a bit. Yeah, we're waiting for the uh, the kicking tee, actually. Uh, I guess uh, the Don Darrow guy is going to borrow a uh, tee from Athens instead of using his own. And that's the cause of the delay here. Now he's got it, he's got the football, and I think we're going to finally get this thing started. Okay, so... It'll be Brad Richardson to kick off and back deep for the Red Hawks is number 32, Jeff Smith. Seen, and we're ready to start the third quarter. We've seen Smith make a few big plays tonight already as well. Yeah, some good returns from him. And uh, good receptions offensively. Here we go. And we are. I say we are underway here in the third quarter. Smith breaks a couple, and if he breaks this one, he's going to have a couple guys to beat, but tripping him up was number 82, Richardson, the kicker, and that finally got him down, but a great return for Smith. Really, they got to be a little congestion at the end, which kept him from going all the way, but once again, we see him making a big play. And again, they're not going to have to sustain a very long drive, just a little over 50 yards now to get into the end zone. He just blows right by number 25, Ryan Parsons, yeah. and now gets into heavy traffic. This is what slows him up, but then here the kicker, Richardson yeah. says, I'm going to put an end to this. Right, he forces him back closer to the middle. You know, now we've seen each team have a potential huge uh, kickoff return stopped by the return man running into his own gap. Look at this run by McDonald. Brent McDonald spinning and turning and running backwards even. Picks up the first down. He just went with the crowd. Watch this run. Just I mean, right off, almost off the guard there, and then he cuts it up. And here he's running backwards yeah. for about five yards. Yeah. Look at that. We said earlier, never stops his legs. 
First and 10, now the ball into Oaks territory, about the 43-yard line. Stroinski back to pass. He's got a man open right down the middle, complete. And down to the 15-yard line. Complete to number 44, Mark Sturm. They sent three guys straight down the field on this play. And Sturm was just wide open. He beat the middle linebacker, and then he beat the safety deep. And I think he juggles the ball for a second here. Yeah. So he just, and I think he might have scored if that hadn't happened, but another great play. That's the second time we've seen him make a big catch. And, and they're, already, down. Yeah, they say they're already inside the 20. Brought down by Carraway. Jason Carraway, ball at the 15-yard line. First and 10 there for the Red Hawks. Two receivers down to the left of the screen. Strinsky on the handoff. The straight dive by McDonald gets inside the five. It's first and goal. I'll say this line is opening up those holes for him. He's doing a great job running. We were missing that all night, but take a look at these, these blocks he's getting here. You know, look at 72. Brian Hughes leading the way for him in 74. Look stand. He's opening up holes for him. He's getting real quick into the hole. Carraway rode his back and finally got him down inside the four. First and goal for the Red Hawks. It'll be McDonald again. McDonald off tackle and he bounces and hit for a loss. Hitting him hard down there. It looked like Tillotson and it was. Well, you know, the minute you start crediting guys that are blocking, the guy loses yardage. It's one of those things. But here, really, they just, they blitzed some of their, uh, I think the cornerbacks got him in there. You know, once again, like we've mentioned all night, the closer you get to the goal line, the tighter that defense can pack things in and you just have more guys coming up to the line of scrimmage. You know, Loss on the play, Joe. It'll bring a second and five now. I just say the deepest guy in that defense is four yards away. Flags right away. Athens, Athens left side of the line. And an eager... Red Hawks offensive line jumps off sides and that'll... We got procedure. The illegal procedure, the call. Procedure on red. I like this ref. You got it. You know, we got procedure. That's what it is. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta like it. Fred Fuhrer doesn't. He doesn't like this, what he's seen so far, but he does like the penalty going against the Red Hawks right now. That'll knock him back to about the 10 yard line, five yard penalty. John Walker on his side has to come up with a big play here. Second and 10 now. They had the ball inside the five. You're off. Good, you're good. Stroinski, the quarterback. Pro set with the receivers, and he looks into the end zone, and he's got his man at about the five, and they'll go down there. Complete yes. to number 20, Brian Whitehouse. Yeah, he caught it. Uh, you know, this is the second time that we've seen two Athens receivers real close to each other. And you know, I'm, it didn't quite, you know, cause the confusion that it did the other time we saw it, but you know, the, the, you know you, excuse me, you have two guys there, you bring more defenders, and you can see the minute he caught it, there was two corners right there to tackle. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and four, third and four, rather, from the four-yard line. They need to get into the end zone. McDonald stacked up. Yeah, but he got down to about the one. And let's see where he did get. Yep, uh, close to the one. And it'll be fourth and about a yard coming up now. Now, do you try the field goal or do you go ahead and get the touchdown? I say you go for the touchdown, mainly because if you don't get it, you've got them pinned on the goal line, whereas if you go for a field goal and miss it, it becomes a touchback and they get it at the 20. Here we go, that same formation strong to the left side. They've got a running back up right in between the tackle and the guard. Everyone knows where it's going. They go the other way As and they get in. You know, Walker told us before the game, and we just let him know where we're going and let him try and stop us. So what does he do? He deceives everybody, including us, and gets a touchdown with there it. There goes the other way. Kohlenberg on the touchdown. We mentioned earlier he was going to atone for that fumble that he made earlier. Here he does. Let's take a look. They're strong to the left side, but they go to the right with McDonald leading the way. Not bad. This guy's been blocking for you all night. Now you get him a touchdown. That's right. James Kohlenberg on the touchdown. And it's 26 to seven, the extra point attempt by Schiller. All right, where do you think this ball's gonna land? I Parking think this, lot? 
just shy of, uh, well, maybe on the track, I should say. Okay. I'm he wants to keep it in the ballpark. Oh, this is blocked. Shalair has been kicking them high and hard, and now this low, they seem like a lower kick, yeah, but they, the penetration really they, got in there. They got through so quick that he'd have had to almost kick it straight take a up look. to do it. This wasn't a bad kick, I don't think. Hold's Snap there. is high. Yeah, but the hold's there. The hold is there. Good kick. No, they were just But good penetration as well. Yeah, they were just there. I mean, you can tell how hard he kicked it just by seeing where thing bounced after it hit the guy's hand. Yeah. Yeah, he drilled the last one. Too bad it was just over to the right, and this one uh, is no good either. So the big touchdown by Kohlenberg, and it is 26 to 7 here in the third quarter with 7.47 left. Now Dondero is in a must-score situation on this possession. And this is what the Oaks didn't want to happen. They didn't want Athens coming out. Athens will be on next week as well as they take on their arch rival, the Troy Colts in the battle for Troy as we have our season finale here for the game of the week of our regular season. Saturday and Monday at 7 p.m. right here on TCI 63. And the kickoff by Schiller. Low line drive. Taking it, no, at about the 10. Slipping but not going down. And bringing it out to the 20. Good recovery there. And I'm sure that Fred Fuhr is gonna tell him about the mistake he just made. As in high school, as, I'm not sure when this rule came into effect in high school, but it's been in college and pros for quite a while. Kickoff goes out of bounds. You can make him re-kick it, or you can take it at the 35. And obviously that's a 15-yard uh, difference from where the return ended up going. The drive, eight plays, 53 yards and 413 off the clock for Athens. The Oaks have to come up with their own drive now, deep in their own territory. Not much there. And it looked like Mascaro, the ball carrier that time, as we see head coach looking on, Tom Walker, John Walker, excuse me, looking on. Yeah, they're gonna have to throw the ball. You know, they've had a couple of chances where you know, guys were maybe a step or two away, but the Athens Blitz was there all night, and it's going to be there all night because it's been working. But they're going to have to take some gambles. And here they're going to split their tight end out. Richardson goes out to the right side. They throw left. And yeah, good call. <laughs> a penalty flag down as they throw to the intended re receiver, Shaw, number 80. Got there before the ball did. Now just, you, know, you tried to time it right can't really fault anybody on that. It's, it's a pure timing play on behalf of the defensive back, and he just didn't time it right. Okay, let's, be interference. let's hear the call down there. As, uh, got defensive pass interference on the red. So the pass interference call on the Red Hawks. And here you see Tillotson drop back. Looks real quick to the right, nothing there. Now he goes to the quick hitter, and just see the timing, and you know, you just... Yeah, it's not on number 44. It's not on Sturm. It's on the uh, defender behind the receiver. Tillotson getting pressured, and he's buried. At about the 25-yard line, There's and flags flag. are down again. Flags down again, and this might be a little piling on, Joe. I don't know what uh, It could be that or holding, else. but he's talking to Don Darrell, so it probably is, you know, an unnecessary roughness sort of penalty. We saw one player really have a beat on the quarterback, and that was all they needed, and then everybody else started joining in. Oh, it looks like a face mask. Let's take a look. Well, you know, if it happened, we've seen that play called a few times tonight. That is one penalty. Every time it happens, you know, I'm glad to see it called, only because it's usually not intentional, but if you start letting guys get away with it, then it can get intentional. Yeah, that so, was you know, if it's an incidental thing, you still have to call it. And, you know, guys got a little bit. And it was on the far side of the field, so Back we up. could not see that. But, uh, first down and three to go. So a big break for the Oaks. Tillotson 
to throw, has his man, and it, she should have the first down. Yeah, it's all a matter of whether he spots with yeah. his right or left foot. Complete there to Richardson. And Tillinson does a good job of staying in the pocket. He picks up a nice block. You're going to see right here, 83 gets blocked out of the way. That's number 70, uh, Van Gogh. And he's able to get the ball off, and Richardson does get the first down. Like you said, it was a right foot spot. If it had been a left foot spot, he wouldn't have had it. Those are the kind of plays they're going to have to run. Though. They pick up the first down. Ball just over the 45-yard line at the 46. And clock winding down. 5.40 left in the quarter. Pressure as Tillotson is hit immediately just as he's trying to let go of his pass downfield. And he is hit there by Kohlenberg. Yeah, they, know, they know that they're going to pass on almost every down. They're going to, the blitz has been working all night, so they're going to keep going with it. And here he doesn't even have a chance to look. Does a great job of getting the ball away. Kohlenberg from the backside gets in there, knocks him back. Second down and 10. Yeah, he's got a. Tillotson has he's a, got a card with, yeah. yeah. I saw him doing that before the, uh, in the warmups, the pregame warmups. He's got a little list, not the wristband thing that you see a lot of guys have. He's actually got a script that he's reading. Second and 10 now. Tillotson back to pass. Everybody's coming in because it's a screen. And they pick up the first down and more. Let's take a look. Ian Jones, does he get in? Yes, yes. he does. He breaks the plane for the touchdown. A good effort by Ian Jones to dive in as he was tripped at the last second. And he gets in for the touchdown. And the Oaks really needed that one. What do you do when a team starts blitzing nonstop on you? How do you stop it? You go ahead with the screen pass. You sit back. Here he does. We've seen him try it before where he didn't do as good a job of selling it. This time he sells the regular play. He sells him on the screen. Gets the ball to him, and now the linemen are already downfield. As long as the pass goes behind the line of scrimmage, which that did, the linemen can be downfield as far as they want. He's got the blockers down there setting things up for him. Then it's up to Jones just to turn the speed on and get there. Just barely outruns Brian Hardaway at the very end, but gets into the end zone. A big play for Dondera. 54 yards on the run by Jones. And the Oaks have a chance to make it 26-14. Let's see if they do. The extra point attempt is up. And it is good. And 26-14, and a big extra point that was, too, for the Oaks. Yeah, big extra point, because if they score two more touchdowns, they don't even, if they don't make either extra point, it'll be a tie game. And uh, Tillotson, that one wasn't as, <laughs> as high a kick as his first uh, extra point, but, it, you know, he, he's been pretty good as well. So Dondero comes back after scoring the first seven points of the second quarter. They come back here in the third quarter and uh, answer the touchdown by the Red Hawks. Don't forget to tune into Transition. Transition is a program designed to give perspective pertaining to African-American issues. Host Jeffrey Miller Coach, has conducted team, interviews with uh, Louis Farrakhan, John Conyers, and the outgoing Coleman, Coleman like Young, Golden. and he is very outgoing. Uh, I've always thought so. Watch Transition Saturday night at 10 on TCI 63. Back to receive, you see Smith jumping up and down. He's the one who wants the ball, and Richardson to do the kicking. They, they always have somebody on the edit button when Coleman Young is on the show. <laughs> all times. Yeah. That's where you hear the beeps. Yeah, people complain about beeps. <laughs> Smith takes it as he comes running full speed, twisting and turning and trying to get to the 40-yard line, but he won't make it there. Gets over the 35, though, to about the 38-yard line. You know, both teams today have done a great job of returning kickoffs, giving themselves good field position. You haven't seen anybody pinned back too deep. Take a look at a Smith uh, getting some uh, good running start there and tells his uh, up back, which was Kohlenberg, to get out of the way. Yeah. You know, and again, just a smart return. We've seen it all night both ways. Not doing too much uh, fancy stuff, just getting as much yardage as they can, getting the ball where the offense has a lot of room to work. And he does have a lot of room. Ball at the 38-yard line. First and 10 there for the Red Hawks. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. Boy, these defensive backs are playing way off. You throw a quick hitter over here to the left, you're going to get a lot of yardage. McDonald eludes one. But can't get away from the rest of the line of scrimmage there. It took too long to develop that play. On the tackle, number 56, Corey Henry. 
for Don Dero. Of course, what happens, you know, you obviously, you know going in, you see a little problem with the handoff there. You know going in about it, McDonald, and, but when you see him actually start to get this great game that he's having on you, you, send, you have one or two of your linebackers just spy on him, say, I don't care if somebody else takes your area and goes for 50, you don't let him go by. Quick drive here for the Oaks, six plays, 59 yards, 257 off the clock. But you know, basically what you're saying, it's almost like basketball, they're in a man-to-man -man defense. These guys, they have one responsibility, and that's Brent McDonald. And Delay of game again on the Red Hawks. That's the second, that's the second time. time that's happened. Taking too much time in that huddle, or just getting set up out there. Yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes coach just <laughs> takes too much time getting the play in, too. A lot of times, you know, I don't want to say this time it's a coaching yeah. thing, but a lot of times you just don't get the and play in. And you can't blame it on the crowd noise because the crowd is on your side. But they are loud. <laughs> they are loud, yes. You can hear them down there. Loss, uh, five yards, second and 15. And again, they don't go the quick opener, but flags fly. There was a hitch in that snap. Yeah. And that's probably what the penalty's gonna be. Seemed like everybody took off. Let's see what happens. It'll knock them back again. There it is, illegal procedure on the Red Hawks and the offense falling apart here in the third quarter. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that again, but a lot of times what looks like illegal procedure when the quarterback struggles, I guess we're not gonna see it, but when the quarterback struggles with getting the snap, as long as the center has piped the ball, even if the quarterback's trying to get it out of his hands, there's nothing wrong with it being else moving. But a lot of times it looks so awkward that yeah. the referees call the penalty yeah. anyway. Here we go, second and 20. They got out of this last time on a draw off to McDonald. Let's see if they try something like that again. They do it again, but this time the Every, Oaks were waiting for it. Everybody remembered that. Yeah. Yeah, everybody remembered that play. That's the one they got out of deep in their own end of the field. Let's see. They try it again. Well, and again, I think Don Darrow might just be saying, you know, if you're going to score any more on us, somebody else is going to get the yardage. You know, I'm tired of seeing this guy run all the time. Uh, you mentioned they're going to start keying on McDonald, yeah. and that's what they're doing. And they lose a yard on it. It'll be third and 21. Think they'll go to the air now? Um, I think they'll go screen pass. Let's see what they do. We got Smith down to the right of the screen, but they're looking up top. Whitehouse off his fingertips, and it had not uh, Cal, uh, Cal Cagno fall down, uh, fell down there, uh, number 23. Had he not fallen down, he, he may have had an interception there. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons I thought they might go to a screen is you've got 21 yards to go. Even if he catches that, look, he's got 10 more yards to go before he gets the first down. Yeah. It is, you've got to have a lot of time to let that receiver get those 20 yards before you throw the ball, and you didn't have the time. And we got a little uh, rumble in the stands here. Nah, it looks like a friendly. Or is uh, it just fun stuff? Fun stuff going oh, on, okay. everybody's smiling. And they're looking for something. Oh, it's like Michigan State fans throwing each other over. There each we go. Heads. Oh, okay. End over end punt. Fielded down there by Caraway. Jason Caraway brought down at about the 41, 42 yard line. By a bunch of people. And uh, that's pretty good field position though for the Oaks. Yeah, Larry uh, Way led the way on that. And uh, Ed Masters also got in on that tackle. But they, they covered this punt real well. Let's take a look. See right there. Whoops. Can't get his footing as pretty much everybody's had that problem tonight. And now, actually number 35 Schiffer leads the way and everybody else joins in with him. Even uh, one of his own teammates. <laughs> Ian Jones, who scored the touchdown, tried to get on top there. Oh, he's everywhere. <laughs> Here we go. The Oaks scored on their last possession. Can they do it again? Tillotson looks things over, hands off to Jones again. Jones off tackle and a good game, maybe about nine yards. Let's take a look at where they mark it. So you force Athens to play a more honest defense after you've just passed the ball up and down the field on them in that last drive, and it opens up the running plays for you. Here you see no blitzing linebackers coming in. No, no, real, nobody blitzing from any position actually, and it gave him a lot of room. Second down and one. Nine yards on the carry. Second and one's a great time to throw deep. Yeah, it jump. In and with somebody jumping off sides, and the flags go flying. Oh, 
And he was drawn offside. Let's see. Somebody else moved on the offense. Well, I saw, I saw the Athens guy move. I didn't see the Dondero guy, but obviously the officials did. And now second and six is not a good time to throw deep. So second and six now. Clock still rolling with 150 left here in the third quarter. Fred Fuhrer on the sidelines wants to get in the end zone here. This is a big series right here for the Oaks. Oh, he moved again. Parsons in motion and that wasn't the flags all over the field. And this is just killing the drive here for the Oaks. And left tackle just picked his head up. Um, you know, picked his hand up also. You can move your head, but he, yeah. he stood up and uh, from second and one to second and 11, now they're in a lot of trouble. Jones on uh, the first down carry had a nine yard gain. It was second and one now. Second and about 12. There's Parsons, Parsons, and he just gotten away from that. Would have picked up the first down and maybe even gone all the way. Uh, Brian Hardaway with the, uh, the big tackle there for the Red Hawks. Let's take a look. Ryan Parsons has one guy to beat around the outside. So he fakes two dives into the line. Then he has to cut up the middle right away. Wasn't able to take it around as, quick as quickly as he wanted to. And there you see Hardaway comes up with the big tackle. So it's third and about seven now. And there is our number one fan for the Athens Red Hawks. He wears his number one fan uh, hat. And he's getting everybody going. You can hear him. Oh, and that helped because Tillotson is buried. And the Oaks have to punt it away after getting good field position and picking up uh, nine yards on the first down carry. They get knocked back, and it's fourth. And about 14, 13 yards. Let's take a look. That guy's better than the uh, Philly Fanatic. Yeah, here, here, <laughs> now they do bring the blitz in because they know that on third down and six, it's a passing play. And 83, as Brad Baker gets in real quick. And Tillotson, again, as it's happened a lot tonight, never had a chance. The snap over the head of Richardson, and the Red Hawks are smelling another touchdown here. Ball gets kicked around. They may even get one right now, and they do. Oh, I think the ref's gonna call it at the one. Or it was kicked. Oh, yeah, they're going to call that kick, which they're not going to give it. It looked like uh, ref obviously thought it was Kohlenberg had it in the end zone, but they're going to bring it back. Yeah, the ref obviously thought it was an intentional kick. If it's incidental, I think that play goes. But still, Athens has the ball at about the eight yard line. It's hard to tell. Let's take a look. I think just somebody was running down there. Uh. <laughs> It's hard to tell. If I'm an official, I'd make the same call they did. Uh, it wasn't uh, Kohlenberg. It was number 35 falling on it, Matt Schiffer. Yeah. Schiffer was the one who had it. He's the one who kicked it. I'd have made the same call. Yeah, good call. Tough to tell there. But, you know, I'll tell you, that's one of those where, you know, the punter's in a no-win situation, but the only thing you can try to do is, you know, dive on the ball. But, you know, you want to dive on the ball when there's five guys from the other team coming to pounce on you? Well, that'll end the third quarter here at Athens High School. And it turns out to be a good third quarter right now for the Red Hawks because they pick up the ball deep in Oak territory. They scored on a Kohlenberg uh, one-yard run. The Oaks came back with a 54-yard run by Jones. So uh, balanced scoring there for both teams. The extra point was good for uh, the Oaks. No good extra point for uh, uh, Athens. So they did pick up a point on them, and it stays 26-14 yeah. in favor of uh, the Red Hawks. Played by Jones, wasn't that a 54-yard uh, screen pass? Actually, thought he, thought he caught a screen. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of another play. But. <laughs> You may be right. Um, I may be. I may, I may be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and we are about to get the fourth quarter underway here at Athens High School. The Red Hawks having the ball inside, just inside the 10 yard line. So it's first and goal from there. Ball at about the nine yard line. First and goal from the nine. You probably go to Brent McDonald here, let him go around left end and do it pretty quickly. Stroinski, the quarterback. They go to McDonald. McDonald off tackle, spinning inside the five yard line. Let's see where a 
falls. Yeah. About the three, three or two yard line. Kohlenberg getting taped up and back in now. Okay, they're calling it the four yard line officially. Yeah. Inside the five to the four. Second and goal from the four. Again, strong formation in the backfield. They go the opposite way. And not in for the touchdown. It'll be third and about a yard. Less than a yard, really. Still gaining yards every time, though. Doing a great job. That's Schiffer that time. Let's take a look. Just keep pulling guys with you and get as much as you can. They're almost in quarterback sneak territory again. Kohlenberg, 45 in there with McDonald and Sturm, the up back. And they go right behind Sturm and McDonald in for his third touchdown. And the Red Hawks fans love it. And what a way to start the fourth quarter for the Red Hawks. 10.45 left. And right behind number 44, Sturm. Let's see where they go. Yeah, Sturm, big block. Uh, that's what we had heard about earlier. We're going to show you what we're going to do and really do it. And this time, they did show going left, and they went left. And I guess they're going to kick the extra point. A two-point conversion would give them a 20-point lead. I guess they're going to feel confident about a 19-point lead. And I think I would, too, in the fourth quarter. The extra point attempt. By Chalair, up, and this one's no good again. It goes off to the right side once again. But he had good distance. Again, he's got a lot of leg. Gotta but, uh, work just, on the accuracy a He's got to get that accuracy down. Uh, had a lot of room to kick it there. Well, if you're a coach, I think you'd rather have a guy who's got a real strong leg and not too accurate, because I think you could probably teach that a lot better than you can teach distance. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can have a guy who might be accurate but can't kick over 20 yards. That's not going to help much. And nonetheless, the Red Hawks with a big lead, 32 to 14 right now. That looked like a pretty good uh, position for the Oaks last drive. They had a, a carry of about nine yards on that first down, which had them at second and one and the penalties just killed him. Oh, yeah, the Took penalties. him right out of the game now. Well, and then the, uh, you know, the bad snap on the punt. You know, and we'd seen a couple times when they were punting that the snaps were high, and that time it, it got him. There you see, you know, three plays, 10, 10 yards. Took, took over a minute, though. Took over, took some time off the clock and got him into the fourth quarter. Shalair to boot this one. Good kick, end over end, taken at about the 10. And it's Carraway again. Carraway trying to make a cut, stumbles and will not reach the 30. Down at about the 28. First and 10 from the 28 now for the Dondero Oaks as they will start there. And they've got to go back to that all-out passing attack that they had to use early in the third quarter to get themselves back in the game. Here you see Caraway once again just getting as much yardage as he can. Can't really make any cuts on that field. But, you know, get some decent field position. Up close to the 30-yard line. Now it's up to Tillotson to, you know, Hit, hit the open receivers, and the line's got to give him more time than he's been getting. First and 10, the carry by Mascaro. Mascaro trying to make a cut back, and everybody else catches up to him. Yeah, it's over the 30-yard line to about the 31. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to get a lot of yardage cutting only because by the time you've made that cut, as you can see, you can't cut sharp. By the time you've changed your direction, the defenders have reacted to it. And there they, you know, guys that were out of the play have a chance to come back in and make the play, and they did that time. Something you don't like seeing is your quarterback with a uniform that dirty. Yeah. I'm going to keep his clean. You know, the back of his jersey, you can just tell this guy's been hit a lot today. Well, you don't want, you don't want the uh, Athens players getting a hold of that card. Yeah, see, really. <laughs> grabbing that card and seeing the plays. Here's Jones, who's hit at the line of scrimmage and squirms for a couple more yards. But uh, the Oaks offense is not really moving that well. It'll bring up third and long now. You see the, uh, the Rowdies in the stands having a lot of fun tonight again. The 
festive homecoming crowd at Athens High. And yeah, that's what it is. I couldn't have described it any better. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at the uniforms here, the Oaks kind of remind you of the uh, New York Giants. With the yeah, way, with that helmet. With the, the helmet. So yeah. it's really like the 49ers against the Giants here. Well, it, it, yeah. I guess. And hit from behind pass. is Tillotson. And they're counting it as a pass. Yeah, he, had his arm he had his arm ready to throw, and that's why that ball came squirting out like that. Oh, his arm going forward. You can have your arm ready to throw if you fumble. That's a fumble, but he had it going forward. Forward motion. Let's take a look. According to the official, we couldn't Here, see He too brings well. it back. No? Where? Well, there it is. Well, right there. You can tell he's it? taking the step to throw, and boom, he gets it right there. You know, if they called it a fumble. <laughs> That's one of those. I don't just think, by the motion, think, he was ready to throw. Oh yeah, but I can say unless the arm actually moves forward, uh -huh. it's not. A, it's not a pass. If it's going backwards, it's still not a pass. Well, we did not see it. Oh, Smith is hit immediately by Tillotson, and did a good job of holding on to the football. And sure did, and it looks hurt. like he might be hurt. Could be his leg. Yeah, it, he slid a little as he caught that. He had to reach for it, and. Uh, He's had a good night uh, receiving and returning. Let's take a look. Here you see the punch short and he comes up and tries to make the play on it. And as he's trying to get a hold of it, I think he probably just jammed something. Yeah, he's know, grabbing his leg right, right, right away. away. Wow. And he's on the sideline now being tended to. Strinsky, the quarterback. 8.25 left here in the fourth quarter. Red Hawks at about the 35 yard line. Straight dive this time, and they get maybe a couple of yards out of it. It'll be second and about eight or nine coming up. Yeah. Kohlenberg on the carry. Now, one of the things you look for here is Athens to try to move the ball down the field, take as much time off the clock. If they happen to score, that's fine. But this, you know, aside from being homecoming and everything else, it's also for the seniors, their last game ever on this field. He's probably going to try and get every single senior into this game. Fred Fuhrer on the far sideline. Would like to come up a turn with a turnover himself here. Heading off of Sturm, number 44. A little muddy down there. Second down and about nine yards here. Straight dive again. This is Kohlenberg again. And he gets a pretty good carry out of it. See Brent McDonald's on the sidelines. He might be uh, he might be done for the day unless they really need him. McDonald, one of those seniors. Let's take a look at the dive by Kohlenberg. And Kohlenberg. Just rumbling in there. Yeah, just taking it straight up. Out, basically, Athens just outpowering Don Darrow right now. And with more players on the roster, they're just going to be in better condition and have more endurance for the fourth quarter. Third and about three, and they better get the snap off soon. They do. Stumbling around the outside is number 27, Brian Cool. And Cool does not pick up the first down. It'll be fourth and short yardage coming up. Yeah, first time we've seen Cool carry the ball, he's a junior. Got about a yard. That's going to make it fourth and two. And I don't know if they're going to bother punting or not. You might want to. If I was Athens, I'd go for it. I mean, if you make the first down here, you're going to be able to take another two minutes at least off of the clock. And that's what they're going to do. Stroinski goes back into the quarterback position, and we've got Wyckoff down to the bottom of the screen, and up top is number 25, Schiller. Two men in the backfield, Kohlenberg and Cool. And the handoff goes to Cool. He'll get the first down. Yeah, yeah, the officials say just, they always got to make sure how they spot it. I mean, if you watch high school officials, a lot of officials, you watch him just kind of lunge here for the first down. A lot of high school officials, for some unknown reason, when it's close, will look at the chains first and then make the spot, which I've never understood. You know, <laughs> just put the ball where you think it is and let's see what happens. But, and then look up. Yeah, but these guys didn't do that. They spotted it and the play was a first down and that's fine. And. Storinsky just came out, senior, so that's his probably his last play on this field. Comes out a winner as a senior, and they've got number 20 now. Brian Whitehouse. Whitehouse goes to quarterback, handing off and to I'm, Kohlenberg, and Kohlenberg picks up a good chunk of yardage. I'm pretty sure it's got to be the same family. He's got a brother, I think, named Scott, who was a uh, all-area quarterback uh, two years ago here at Athens. And there's the dive on the far side. 27's been fooling our camera folks up there uh, pretty good, so got to give him some credit too. Yeah, really. They're tough to fool. I know. 
Second down about four coming up. Six yards on the carry by Kohlenberg. If there was an all TCI cable team, I guess he'd be on it. <laughs> Second down, the kind of a counter in the backfield, and it doesn't fool anybody on Don Darrow's side. <laughs> And on the carry was number 34. That is uh, Eberhard, Gary Eberhard in there now. And now you're going to get a lot of different guys carrying the ball, I think. And third and four, you've still got, again, two plays. And they've taken a lot of time off the clock inside of five minutes now, doing everything they want to do. I don't even think scoring touchdowns is that big a deal right now. It's just moving Well, the clock. it is for some of these guys on for them, the field. Yeah, I'm saying for the coaches. Wyckhouse to throw. He's got a man and overthrows him. He was in, uh, tending that one to... Uh, Brian uh, Bocamp outside on the flat there. Yeah, he had a man open down the middle too, 84 Hoff. If they uh, if they were to go back to that play, they could probably get him open and get a touchdown real quick if they want to. So now it's a fourth and about a long three here. And the Athens fan getting everybody going here. They got to pick up that first down. He's right in front of us down here in the stands and you can't <laughs> help but notice the guy. <laughs> getting everybody fired up. Fourth and a long three here. Wyckhouse in the handoff, cutting outside and picking up the first down is number 23, Steve Eberhard. Eberhard picked up uh, some blocking out there, and there you see the first down call by the number one fan. And you know what, Joe? He is in our open. He impressed us so much last year Seriously. that we put him in our uh, TCI uh, wow. Game of the Week open. We're not even in that. I mean, <laughs> We're wow. not even in that. Yeah, gee. But yeah, you see someone out here coming out to the games and they inspiring should, the youth. They should get that today. guy a costume or like the Philly Fanatic. <laughs> First and ten as the Red Hawks continue to roll and take the time off the clock. On the carry, Eberhard, Gary Eberhard. We've seen Steve Eberhard pick up the first down and Gary Eberhard coming back the other way. And we really are seeing everybody come in. Just, you know, it's hard to even keep up with all the numbers coming in and out of these plays. Second down and five now. And the Red Hawks on the move. Four and about four minutes and about five seconds left here in the fourth quarter. The Red Hawks continue to roll. Everybody's coming in from the Oaks and they finally get some pressure defensively as they were expecting that one and sack them for a loss. On the carry was 23 and that was Steve Eberhardt. And now we'll have to see as, as they lost a little bit of yardage, third and about seven, if they're gonna go back to a, a pass play. Like I mentioned before, they had Hoff open across the middle. If they go back to that, you have to see if Dondero's made any adjustments to that play as well. And back to pass was Wyckhouse, and he goes down on a sack and another loss. So the Dondero Oaks defense finally getting yeah, sacked by fired up. 59 Ted Vestrand. Here we see the sack. And our number one fan, we get word, that's Tony Haddad, his son. Uh, Laffey played uh, three years ago. And there you see the real number one fan, that's the coach <laughs> on the sideline. Well, that's he, John I, Walker. I he's Oxford's number one fan. <laughs> Is he? That's right. His <laughs> he son's must be. He's there. changing all the games. Flags fly everywhere in a fourth and 12. And now let's see what's going on down on the field. Clock stop now with 2.52 left in the game. And it's an illegal procedure on the Red Hawks. So that'll knock him back even more and bring him up a fourth and about uh, 16, 17 yards. Fourth and a real long way. Yeah. So we get a shot of our number one fan. We got a name now to go with him. That's Tony. Let's see if uh, they can <laughs> get this first down. Fourth and 16. Let's see if they go to the air. They'll probably just run a draw. Well, they just run a straight uh, dive <laughs> off to the right side here. Off tackle, rather. Yeah, that's just trying to get the clock going. By the time they get the punt off here, I guess they, did they call a timeout? No, that was fourth down. No, yeah, but I mean, the clock has stopped. Oh, that was all right. Change your possession. Yeah, I'm thinking if they want to. Change of possession. Timeout on the refs. Let's see the refs start, call timeout. Yeah, the clock's right. going to start in a second, though, yeah. and they're going to, by the time they get a play started, there'll be just barely two minutes left in the, uh, in the game. 
And the clock will start now. Not much time on the oak side right now. Tillotson to throw. Off the fingertips of his intended receiver is Shaw. Kevin Shaw just couldn't hang on to that one, and if he did, he would have been wrapped up right away. That had been a tough And catch. he was. That was coming in hot and high, and you know, where, where the receiver exposes the ribs a little bit, but. Uh... Clock is stopped now with 2.16 left here in the fourth quarter. Red Hawks have pretty much dominated here. They did have a tie ball game. Going into the second quarter, the Oaks scored quickly and made it 7-7. Tillotson to throw deep, intended again for Shaw, and that is out of his reach. Yeah, they suddenly got third down, you know, and we're seeing, we are seeing a lot of new Red Hawk players in there. Everybody Maybe aren't in. used to playing a lot, but they're also fresh and not tired. There he is, number one fan, Tony Haddad. And his son played here three years ago for Athens. And there he is in our open. Look at that. How about that, Tony? We got you in wow. there. He's big time. That's right. The officials have called a timeout down on the field. And they're looking at the scoreboard, looks like. Oh, don't change the time, please. And they might want to get some more time on the clock. Let's see what happens. No! No! <laughs> And the folks having a good time here on homecoming night. And they do, they want to put some more time on the clock here. Let's see. Uh, 204, they went from 151 to 204. There they go. And that, that you file that under the like it matters column. Usually so, refs want to take time off when the game's already out of reach. They want to give uh, the Oaks a fair chance, Joe. Come on, lighten well, I, up, all right, I buddy? Know, but this is not a pro game. Well, exactly. That's why they shouldn't <laughs> worry about the clock. Well, the kids <laughs> want to get their last shot Yeah, but here. if they score, it'll be in less time than that. Oh, and it's almost, almost caught down there. Intended again for Shaw. They go his way three consecutive times, and it doesn't work out. Let's take a look. And here he's got him. He's double covered. He makes it really a good throw. It's right there. And the defenders come over and make a good play on it. Double covered. Still Coverage. right there. Right there. Go back out there. Yep. And that was, I believe, Bryce Stacer making the play for him. And they're going to go for it again. 158 on the clock now. Fourth and 10, ball just uh, shy of midfield. Tillotson back to pass, has time. Unloads downfield and in and out of the hands of his intended receiver down there. And that was Carraway, number 48. We're not sure that would have been enough for a first down. It would been close. Depends on how the ref spots. Well, look from, from my line. angle, yeah. he was behind was the, he? The, okay. the flag, so he would have had the first down. Was he behind? Okay, yeah. yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. By the time he got tackled, he wasn't there, but it yeah, doesn't matter cool. now. He didn't catch it. He had Shaw open on the other side, but you know the defense has been double covering Shaw all night, so he might as well go to somebody else. And celebration time on the Red Hawk sideline. Big homecoming victory for them. We saw Schiffer doing his Kurt Schilling imitation with the towel over the head. And a good, strong run down there by Gary Eberhardt as he ran a couple people over. You know about Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling? Yeah. Yeah. Philly's pitcher. That's right. With the towel over the head. That's right. Looking. He doesn't look as nervous as Schilling does, though. I and think because his you team's going to win and Schilling's isn't. because he didn't isn't. have to pitch. Yeah. And well, his team's <laughs> going to win Schilling's isn't, so that's a big difference, too. Second down, and about six yards coming up now. Weichhouse, the quarterback in there, handing off to the other Everhard, Steve Everhard, going around the left side. And it'll be third and short yardage coming up now for Athens. And clock continue to continue to roll now at 105 left in the game. You see the mud, and you see that, that once was a great uniform. Uh, Clean, rather, I should say. <laughs> yeah, football uniform doesn't Matt look good until it's there. dirty now. Come on. But uh, the award-winning uniform, I should That's say. That's right. Award-winning uniform of, uh, of high schools. Troy Athens, yeah. That's right. Third and five. On the carry, Gary Eberhard, and uh, I think he's going to be short of the first down. It'll be fourth and maybe a yard coming up. And depending on when the ref puts this ball down, they might not have to run a play. Yeah, they will. They've got, there's a two second difference. They will have to run it, so they do have to get the first down 
or else the clock will stop for the change of possession. That's right. 15 seconds, counting down. You can see the clock. Now the smart play here, it doesn't matter at this point, is right about now you have your offensive lineman jump. That doesn't matter now. Oh. Now there will be a change of possession. What will be a change of possession? If you have a thing to the lead, then the clock stops. As you see, it gets uh, kind of taken and thrown to the ground from behind the line of scrimmage. If you have a delay of game, when the clock stops, it won't restart. But if you have an illegal procedure, after the ball's set down, the clock will restart. So if there's more than 25 seconds left, you don't take a delay, you get it down to about eight seconds, you have your own guy purposefully go off sides, the ref has to restart his 25 second clock, and you never run a play. There you go. So that's how you can do it next time. That's how you if, don't have to risk fumbles when you're that's trying to run right. clock out. It's a dirty thing, but it works. <laughs> The, uh, and because there's a change of possession, the clock right. runs out before they even have to run a play again. So, so unless Dondero wanted to call a timeout, which it looks like they did. Right. Looks like they're going to give Dondero a timeout, which will give him one play in, well, five seconds. Well, now. he went down, yeah, he went down in five seconds, and that's what they put back up. Yeah. So they did use a timeout. Now they are going to try to score. And otherwise, the clock would have run out because... As we said, with penalties, also on change of possession, unless there was an incomplete pass, the clock restarts. Well, the Athens players happy, but they're saying, oh, come on, five seconds, give me a break. They want to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. John Walker looking on, said, okay, guys, let's uh, just stop them from getting into the end zone here with the five seconds left. Yeah, they got a big game next week to worry about now. And we will be there next week. Don't forget to tune in then. See, uh, Troy, who I think is ranked in one poll, third in the state in Class AA. It's going to be the Battle of Troy next week. Right now, the Oaks want to get one more playoff. And they do. Tillotson to throw. Going deep to Shaw again. And, well, they continue to go that way, and that'll end it. Throw an interference flag on that play, but I think they know better than that. John Walker, the victor here on homecoming night for him. Going to shake hands with Fred Fuhr. And uh, tough season for Fred Fuhr, but he'll be back. And we see the two coaches. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, both schools have a game left. Obviously, we mentioned Troy and Troy Athens. Kimball and Don Darrow play each other in the Dome. Don Darrow can spoil the Crosstown Rivals season. If, if Kimball wins that game, and things work out like I think they're going to, they're going to make the playoffs. But if Don Darrow beats them, that's all over. So you can play a little spoiler, and, you know, if you can't make it yourself, it's kind of fun to knock the Crosstown rival out as well. That's right. So this week we take a look at the spoilers. We look at Athens and Don Darrow. Next week we'll take a look at Athens taking on the Troy Colts, and the Don Darrow Oaks go on to play Kimball and try to be spoiler there. The final score here at Athens High School, the Red Hawks 32 and the Don Darrow Oaks 14. We'll be back to wrap it up right after these messages. Stay with us. for battle and join in the action as Pat and Bubba take you to Almont, Michigan to experience the game of paintball. You'll see firsthand what it's like on the paintball field as the guys narrate their way through the fierce battle. So for the best in pop music videos and all the paintball action, watch Roadshow Video. Coming up next on TCI 63. If you wish a video cassette of TCI Sports, the cost is $25. Send a check payable to TCI, along with your name, address, and the names of the teams that played in the game, to TCI Sports Videotapes, 4500 Delamere Boulevard, Royal Oak, Michigan, 48073. Remember to tell us which game you wish to receive. And thank you for watching TCI Sports. The final here at Athens High School, 32 to 14, as the Red Hawks defeat the Dondero Oaks and make it a very successful homecoming night for their team. And uh, it was pretty much uh, Red Hawks as they scored three times uh, consecutively. And we'll talk about that when we look at the scoring. But uh, let's take a look at the final stats for you. 82 yards rushing, 78 passing for Don Darrow, which uh, gives him a total of 160. On the other side, uh, Athens just rolling up the numbers, rushing 225, 97 passing for 322 total. 
And first downs, uh, 23 for Athens, 17 for Dondero. And uh, the, the reason why that is so close is because of the short drives that Athens right. had. Uh, turnovers, 2-1. to uh, Dondero turned the ball over twice. And time of possession, again, uh, very close to uh, first downs because uh, of the uh, short yardage that Athens had to go to get into the end zone. 26 minutes to 21 minutes. Yeah, and you look at Athens, the 225 rushing most of that Brent McDonald, and a lot of that on two huge runs, one of which was a touchdown. And he and gets over 1,000 yards, oh too. Oh, yeah, probably over 1,100 by now. Yeah, here is the scoring, and it was close at one point when the Redhawks had seven and the Oaks had seven, and that was just for a short time in the second quarter. But uh, the Redhawks turned it around quickly in that second quarter. They scored 13 big points to go into halftime, leading 20 to uh, seven, and then uh, it was uh, the scoring pretty much matched there at the end there. Uh, seven points for Dondero in the third quarter, and then six and six for the Red Hawks. It looked like Dondero in the third quarter it came out, put a drive together, got a touchdown pass, and thought looked like they made it close, and then suddenly Athens came right back and blew it away. And Athens will be back next week as we take a look at the Battle of Troy. Next week it'll be Troy as the Colts take on the Athens Red Hawks, and don't miss this battle. This will be our season finale, our regular season finale, right here on TCI 63, Saturday and Monday at 7 p.m. As we take a look at the moon here, and the final score here, 32 to 14, the Athens Red Hawks victors here on homecoming night. For Joe Abramson and all of us here at TCI Sports, I'm Dave Zorin. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week at Troy High School.